folks. This now is a Fox News alert and reading this. The U.S. Supreme Court rules in favor of former President Donald Trump in his appeal of a Colorado ballot disqualification. That applies to Colorado, in all likelihood, it will apply to other states as well. Live to Shannon Bream for her initial analysis and reaction now. Did you have the inside word, Shannon? Hello. Okay. So what we have from the court this morning is this decision in favor of President Trump. They essentially say the judgment of the Colorado Supreme Court that he could be kicked off the ballot in this manner does not stand, has to be overturned. Now, it's a per curiam opinion, which the Latin for that is sort of the court speaks. It's supposed to be sort of a unified voice. But we do, as I'm looking through here, some additional um, folks who wrote, Justice Barrett and I believe Justice is... Uh, Sotomayor, Kagan, and Jackson, they write concurrences as well. So they may have gotten to this in a different way, but I don't see any dissents here. So it sounds like the court as a whole is agreed that whatever happened with Colorado, it was not the proper framework to use here. There is discussion at the end of the main decision that says, you know, there would be essentially a patchwork across the states. This was one of the worries that the justices had and the questions that came together in argument were, what happens if we tell one state they can do this? The chief Justice said, what if one state decides, okay, I'm kicking off a Republican, another state says, okay, I'm kicking off a Democrat, and then we get down to just a handful of states that actually have all of the candidates' names on the ballot, what would that do to this country? So it sounds like the majority of the court has come together in this voice to say what happened in Colorado is not correct. It sounds like they're saying states don't have this power, but essentially this is something that should be left to Congress. And so they agree to that point, but, but how they got to these different positions, how they got to the agreement. They found some different maps there, but they got to the same end result, guys. So, Shannon, I, I have here. two questions for you. One is about Sotomayor. She was uh, considered to be somebody who might disagree. And also, does this mean that for any other state that is thinking about this, like Illinois, for example, that if they're thinking of trying to keep Trump off the ballot, that they would be barred from doing so based on this decision? Yeah, what I've seen so far of this and trying to read through here, it sounds like what they're saying is the states don't have this power. So that would mean any state essentially saying this is something that should have been left to Congress. If you're going to, you know, there's questions not to get too wonky, but about the 14th Amendment, if it was self-executing, if states could pick it up and say, we find someone we think was guilty of insur insurrection, and so we're saying they can't be on our ballot. Um, there was question, though, whether Congress has to give some framework for actually kicking someone off the ballot or making a decision about kicking someone off the ballot. So it sounds like here, um, they say the disruption to allow states would be acute, could nullify the votes of millions and change the election result. Uh, at different times. They say um, enforcing Section 3 against federal office holders and candidates rests with Congress and not the state. So the judgment of the Colorado Supreme Court cannot stand. That sounds like a clear message without having read, read the entire opinion, mm -hmm. but gotcha. a clear message that states do we should not let have you the power keep to do this. Yes, yes. <laughs> we'll, we'll allow you a moment to get a few paragraphs yes. <laughs> into your big brain, Shannon. Right, let's move. To so, yeah, you are... <clears throat> Excuse me. You are hearing correct 9-0 ruling, which a lot of people speculated that that would be the case in this particular case here. Uh, that the Supreme Court in this with the Supreme Court it would be unanimous, and it was 9-0 decision in Trump's favor that he cannot be taken off the ballot. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Cannot be taken off the ballot in Colorado. All of that is out the window. So, um, yeah, expect a lot of leftists to be out here crying in these streets to be um, uh, uh, talking about packing the court as Eli Mastal was talking about. Uh, what was this? Just the other day. Uh, Eli Mastal, the guy from MSDNC. The guy with the afro that was saying all the crazy stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I I expect him to be back saying the same thing. I, you know, oh, pack the court. Oh, pack the court. Which is always a terrible decision because when does that end, right? But um, they also said a lot more than that in their decision, though. And um, I think it's quite interesting. So let's continue. To our team now, Jonathan Turley, you are first up to react to this now, sir. How do you hear it? 
Well, I've just been reading the opinion. It's obviously a sweeping. Uh, there aren't any real dissents. So it does look like it is unanimous, at least on the result. What they have a disagreement on uh, is whether the court had to go as far as it did. Now, the most practical result of this is that the voters will be able to vote for the candidate that they prefer. Uh, this was a critical moment for this court in history. After all of the years we have spent in this republic, uh, we came to a point where these states claimed that they could unilaterally bar the leading presidential candidate from ballots to prevent people from voting for Donald Trump. The court here spoke with a strong, and it appears unanimous re voice, at least on the result, that that's not going to happen, that voters will vote. They'll make their own verdict, regardless of what happens in cases involving President Trump. They will cast the most important verdict of all. They will vote for the next president of the United States. Okay, stand by there, sir. Let's get another opinion in here. Andy McCarthy, what's your read? Um, I, I think Jonathan is right about the bottom line uh, sweeping 9 nothing decision with respect to the states. But I, I think that this case is actually a 5-4 case on what may be the most important decision. If, I, if I'm reading this right, what they're saying is that Section 3 cannot be enforced unless Congress legislates mm -hmm. through Section 5 of the 14th Amendment, which it has done in enacting a criminal statute, which would allow uh, someone to be convicted of insurrection. What I gleaned from this is that they're saying that in the next January 6th, the next time that Congress is called on to ratify an election result, that Congress cannot use Section 3 of the 14th, uh, the 14th Amendment to try to deny Donald Trump the presidency if he wins the presidential election, which is pretty momentous. And uh, it looks to me like uh, Justice Barrett and the three progressives on the court are unhappy that the court reached out and decided that. Mm. Shannon Bream, now that you've had a chance maybe to take a, another mm. look here, anything about the Sotomayor Kagan Jackson yes. uh, contingent? Yeah, I, I think Andy's exactly right there. And what Professor Turley said as well, um, the dis there's not a dissent. They concur in the judgment, but they say they don't think the court should have gone to all these additional questions that they did. They said it was enough, and Justice Barrett said in her concurrence too, just to get to the bottom line that states cannot do this. It's not in their purview to do it. But the dissent again, not dissenters, the concurrence that comes from Justices Sotomayor, Kagan, and Jackson takes a different path. They think the court goes too far. They say this, by resolving all these extra questions, the majority attempts to insulate all alleged insurrectionists from future challenges to their holding federal office. So they feel like the court went too far. You try to go as narrowly as possible. Again, they agree with the overall decision, but think that the court is trying to give too much cover to future um, candidates who may face this scenario, and they just don't think the court should have gone those extra steps. Okay, Shannon, I'm, I'm going to show our viewers this map here, guys, if we could. Um, I, I hope I've got the numbers right. Cor correct me if, if I'm missing a few. It appears that at least nine states, all right, this all applies to Colorado, done. but uh, Illinois has a... But also, before he continues on, and I, I, I'm going to keep playing uh, for a little bit longer, we're not going to watch the whole clip, but um, <clears throat> I think the reason why they went further in the ruling is to resolve all of this before this next election, to get it all out of the way, because we know how Democrats and leftists are. If they, if they kept it pretty simple and narrow, as she was uh, saying there, uh, there could have been some more cases that popped up off, you know, based on some fringe, you know, far. Oh, man, I don't know. I think this could mean, you know, so I, I, I think the Supreme Court and the justices wanted to get rid of the questions. Right. Just 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 stop the nonsense right here, right now. Let's resolve this so that we can get on with our lives, right? So so that we can get on with this. We're not going to make this super narrow ruling. And then two weeks from now, we got this question again, just in a little bit of a different way. It's worded a little differently. And then, you know, so squash it all, get it done with, get it over with, and let's move on to this next election and allow the people of America to decide what they think 
and or feel about Donald Trump. That's why I think they went as far as they went. But that's just my opinion on it. What's yours? Similar charge, so does the state of Maine. Maine uh, is in Super Tuesday tomorrow. And then everything you see in yellow has a case that's pending. Mm -hmm. Does this nullify all of those or some of those or none of those? I, well, I, if you're asking it, me, I think we'd all probably uh, agree that these states have lost their ability to do this, but I'll let my fellow panelists. Okay, all right, Professor well. Turley, is it, all, is it all these cases done? I think they're all dead as Dillinger. I mean, if, when you read this opinion, uh, there is no dissent that the states cannot enforce uh, the um, 14th Amendment provision. Uh, the only disagreement, as we've been discussing, uh, is whether the court should have gone even further to sort of close off future arguments or challenges uh, without an, an action from Congress. The majority is saying that, look, you need Congress to act here before you can enforce this provision. Uh, some of the justices felt they really didn't have to deal with that question. They didn't say, by the way, that they disagree with the conclusion necessarily, mm -hmm. as much as uh, that is a bit of a reach beyond where they need to go. And the dissent is saying, look, we have a long tradition of minimizing our footprint, of trying to stay confined to the question at hand. That's not much of a disagreement. You know, you well, once again, I think the problem lies in where we are as a country right now. Democrats will stop at nothing to try to stop Donald Trump. And I think the Supreme Court justices know that. They see the same things that we do, right? Um, and so I think just to, in, in order to save time, right, just cover it all. Cover it all. I, I, listen, yeah, we, we might have only gotten a question about this specific thing. But let's resolve the entire the whole thing in its entirety so this doesn't come back up again because we know it's going to. If we don't if if we just cover just this sliver this sliver narrow piece right here, everything surrounding it is gonna pop back up. We know how this goes. So like let's just nip this in the butt right now. Let's just make the decision here and right now with this one. And so we're done with it. Right? I feel like that makes a whole lot of sense. Now, I understand where some of the justices are like, no, let's just keep it to the, the question at hand, right? Let's not expand it any further than that. But I, I, I feel like this is a different type of circumstance um, for the reasons that I mentioned earlier. We're, we're, we're dealing with a different type of Democrat currently where we know it. something else would have popped up. You know, they, they would have tried to do something else. Oh, you know, some fringe theory, right, uh, would have popped up to try to get Trump off the ballot. So shout out to the Supreme Court justices. 9-0 ruling in Trump's favor. A great day for America. Great day. Fantastic day, if you ask me. Trump 24, baby. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. But as always, y'all let me know your thoughts, your opinions about all of this in the comment section below. Like, share, comment. Hit that subscribe button before you go. Peace and love. I'm out.